Hello everybody, it's Mr. Ray here with our next lesson in grade 11 University Math. We are working in the Rational Expressions Unit. We have so far looked at um, simplifying rational expressions, and then we've looked at in our most recent lesson, we've looked at multiplying and dividing rational expressions, and the next two lessons we will be looking at adding and subtracting. I've just split the lesson into two separate lessons uh, just to keep the number of examples a little bit lower on each lesson. Uh, but it's the same topic. It's, uh, the homework that, that I've assigned is the, is the same homework. It's just uh, you don't have to do it twice. You just uh, do it after the, uh, the after both of the lessons uh, have been completed. Okay, um, so when we were multiplying and dividing rational expressions, uh, just like when we multiply and divide rational numbers, we just multiply across uh, the numerators and the denominators to get our new result. Um, that's when we're multiplying rational expressions. Uh, one minor change when you do division of rational expressions, just like when you do division of rational numbers, you have to flip the second expression upside down. You're taking the reciprocal and you change the operation from divide to multiply. So very similar to what you do with fractions, rational numbers. Um, it's just, it's a little more complicated because now uh, the numerator and denominator can be polynomials. So today we're looking at adding and subtracting. And, and just like fractions, um, it's always more difficult to add and subtract fractions than it is to multiply and divide because of the fact that before you can combine them by adding or subtracting, um, you have to have co a common denominator for both of the t both of the terms. So um, you, um, we're going to look at a couple of examples where the denominators are already the same, and then uh, several more where they're not the same, and how you have to convert uh, the denominators so that they are the same before you add them. So um, We've got those laid out here. Um, to add or subtract rational expressions with different denominators, write the numerators with expressions with a common denominator. So you're basically create, creating an equivalent expression with the new common denominator that you need to have for all your uh, all your terms that you're adding together. Um, and then we basically convert, we write all of the numerators over one single common denominator and add or subtract the numbers as uh, as it's given to you. So the best thing to do is to look at some examples. Uh, so our first example here, um, you can see uh, in the first example here, uh, if you look at all the rational expressions, all three of them, they all have x squared as their denominator. So in this case, our our lowest common denominator is actually x squared. And I'm doing this uh, now. It seems kind of silly to do it for something that's already the same, um, but eventually we'll have examples where we have to create a lowest common denominator from the given denominators. So I'll, I'll try to be consistent and do the same thing each time. So uh, the lowest common denominator for this uh, expression, and you can see we have an adding and a subtracting in the same operations going on here. Um, so since they denominators are all the same. We can make one big rational expression uh, with that common denominator on the bottom. And we don't have to change anything on the top because they're already over that common denominator. So uh, what you do is you kind of read across. Use the operation between the terms. So it's going to be 3 plus 5 minus 2 on the numerator side. Okay, and now it's just a matter, matter of simplifying the top. Uh, 3 plus 5 is 8. 8 minus 2 is 6. So we have 6 over x squared is our result. And it's simplified as much as we can get it. Uh, again, uh, since we're working with rational expressions, there is that danger of having um, a divide by 0 error. In other words, having a 0 in the denominator. <clears throat> so we have to rule out uh, the chance of that by putting some uh, restrictions. And I'm going to stop writing the word restrictions at this point, 
and just write what the restriction is. So in this case, uh, the denominator is x squared, which means uh, the only restriction is x can't be zero. So I'm going to put that right beside the final result. Okay, uh, if we move along to the next example here, we have a slightly more complicated expression uh, where the denominators are binomials this time instead of monomials like we had here. But again, uh, both denominators are the same. So that makes some nice easy work for us. We have no conversion necessary. So in this case, our lowest common denominator is x plus 2. I'll put that in brackets just for the fun of it. Um, now, same thing again. Since the denominators all are already the same, uh, I don't have to really change anything. I've got my x plus 2 in the bottom. And now I just kind of read across. This one's a little bit trickier than the first one. Uh, the first one we just had 3, 5, and 2. So when we're adding or subtracting, it's pretty obvious what we're doing. Um, so in this case, we're taking 4x minus 1. And I'm going to start putting this in brackets. 4x minus 1. And we're subtracting the numerator of the second. So that's x plus 3 in brackets. Okay, and it's especially dangerous when you're subtracting because it, if I hadn't put those brackets there um, and just put minus x plus 3, it would be wrong because you're subtracting both the x and the, and the 3. Um, so I could put an intermediate step here uh, by removing the brackets and applying the operation. So 4x minus 1, and then I subtract, I guess I want to remove that bracket. So 4x minus 1, I can just take the brackets right off because it's the first expression. But I'm subtracting the second expression, so I'm subtracting each term inside. So it's minus x minus 3 over x plus 2. And now we just combine all the like terms on the top. So I have 4x minus x, that's a 3x. And uh, negative, negative 1 minus 3 is minus 4 all over x plus 2, um, and that's as uh, reduced as we can get, as simplified as we get. And again, I'm going to look at my restriction. So again, um, x plus 2 is the denominator, so that means uh, x plus 2 can't be 0, which means x cannot be negative 2. So here's our final answer with the with the restriction. Okay, you notice we haven't cancelled anything in these examples like we might have done with uh, with multiplying or dividing. Um, so we just have to be aware of that just in case it comes up. So far we haven't had to do anything with these disappearing factors. Okay, um, so we're going to simplify this expression. This time the denominators are, are integers, 4, 8, and 6. So obviously those aren't the same. So before we can combine those, we actually have to come up with a new uh, lowest common denominator. So 4, 8, and 6. Um, the way I teach this, uh, you know, in a, say, a grade 9 class, if you want to come up with the lowest common denominator of 4, 8, and 6, you can just simply put all the multiples of 4, the multiples of 8, the multiples of 6, and then pick the lowest number that appears in all three lists. Uh, one of the things that's going on here is the 4 and the 8. Well, 4 is a factor of 8, so um, I really only have to consider the 8 in this case, because every, every lowest common denominator I get using 8 will also be uh, 1 for 4. So if I'm looking at 8 and 6, and I looked at the multiples, I've got 8, 16, 24, and here I've got 6, 12, 18, 24. So 24 is the lowest common denominator, so I'm going to make special note of that. Um, and now we come up with our new individual. Um, I'm going to convert uh, this expression here, the 3x plus 2 over 4. I, I want every one of these expressions that I'm adding or subtracting to now have a, a denominator of 24. Right now it has a denominator of 6, 
which means, sorry, it has a denominator of 4, which means I have to multiply that by 6 to get the 24. And in order to keep uh, the expressions here equivalent, uh, since I want to multiply the denominator by 6, I also have to multiply the numerator by 6. Okay, so I've already done multiply by 6 on the bottom. So now I just have to show that I'm multiplying the numerator 3x plus 2, multiplying that by 6. Don't try to do too much in one step. Okay, I, I think it's probably too much to expand this and create an equivalent expression in the same line. Just a piece of advice. So the next one, we just copy down the plus sign, which was already there. Again, I want a 24 on the denominator. So I look what I have to do. Uh, I have to multiply the 8 by 3 to get a 24. So that means I have to multiply the numerator by 3 to keep the expression equivalent to the one above. So basically when you look at this, you can say, well, I just multiplied the top and bottom by three and got equivalent expression, but we're, we're building what we want. We want every, every one of these terms or expressions to have a denominator of 24 and do the same thing here. Don't forget that's a minus sign. So you have a minus in between and I'm gonna put a 24 in the bottom, which means I had to multiply the 6 by 4 to get that, so I have to multiply the top by 4 as well. Okay, so we've now done a step that we didn't have to do in the first example, and that's create the common denominator for all, for the entire expression before we can actually start combining. Okay, um, and you could do this, I'll do this one in uh, you know, a couple more steps. You could write an intermediate step where you just expand these. Um, I'm going to be a little more adventurous this time. I'm going to put the whole thing over 24 and expand as I go. So 6 times 3x, that's 18x. 6 times 2, positive 2 is plus 12. And then we're adding this, so we're adding 3 times x, 3x. We're also adding 3 times negative 4, which is three, uh, negative 12. So adding negative 12 is the same as subtracting 12. Um, and now we go to the last one. This one has a subtraction. So we're going to basically be, uh, act like this is a negative 4 when we multiply. So negative 4 times 2x is negative 8x. Negative 4 times negative 1 is plus 4. Okay, so now it's just a matter of combining the like terms. So we have x terms and we have constants. So 18x plus 3x, 21x minus 8x is 13x. And 12 minus 12 cancel out. So 0 so far plus a 4 is plus 4. And that's again all over 24. So that's as reduced as we can get. So that is our final simplified um, answer to this uh, adding subtracting. Um, now, in terms of restrictions on x, um, so right from the beginning you saw all the denominators are all constants. So when you have a constant in the denominator, um, as long as it's not zero, there's no chance it's going to be zero because it's already something else. Um, so in this case, even though there's uh, x's on the top, it, it, it doesn't really matter if the numerator becomes zero. That's totally legal in, in math. Uh, but it is illegal to have a denominator of zero. So um, don't worry about the x's on the top. It's only what's on the bottom that's, that causes the restriction. And since 24 or 6 or 4 or 8 can never be zero, there are no restrictions on x. So... If you're asked to state the restrictions, you would say no restrictions um, as a way to show that you've read the question and, uh, and answered accordingly. You could kind of tell something was probably up here. It's, instead of saying state the restriction, it said, is there a restriction on the variable? That's kind of a giveaway that something's up there. But... Uh, could have easily asked to state the restriction, in which case you would stay, say the same thing. Okay, uh, last example here. Uh, this one actually looks a little bit simpler, but 
it's actually a little bit tricky. And it's very similar to a question we had uh, when we were simplifying rational expressions. Um, if you look at the denominators we have here, we have x minus 3 and 3 minus x. Um, at first glance, you know, those two look different. They are different, but they are sort of the same. Uh, x minus 3 uh, and 3 minus x, you can just see it's got the terms reversed, and that's always a signal that, okay, if I take, usually we'll want to fix the one with the x in the second position. If I multiply that denominator by negative 1, I would get x minus 3, which is the same. So rather than make a really convoluted answer by multiplying both of these to get a common denominator, let's just try to fix this one to become the same as x minus 3. So um, if you remember when we did this before, you could think of this in two ways. I could either factor out a negative 1, which is what the question is kind of inferring will happen, or my personal preference is to say uh, I want to multiply the bottom by negative 1 uh, to, to turn it into x minus 3, so I can fix that. The fact that I'm multiplying by negative 1, I'll also multiply the top by negative 1. So I'm just going to rewrite the question in a way that it's going to work better for us. So the first uh, expression here, 5 over x minus 3, we don't touch it. Um, now, I want to change the bottom of this one to x minus 3, which means I've already multiplied it by negative 1, which means I need to multiply the top by negative 1. So that's going to turn it into negative 2. So you definitely could do it this way, or you could say, okay, if that's a negative 2, I'm just going to subtract it. Um, Either way, it's it's fine. So now, since we have the same common denominator, I guess I should state my lowest common denominator, like I've done everywhere else. And we've successfully changed it. Uh, each expression has that common denominator now. And now we can put them all together into one rational expression. And now I just read across. So 5 plus negative 2 is 3. And that is my the result of this rational addition, rational expression addition. And in terms of the uh, restrictions, okay, um, well, if I looked at this x minus 3, uh, you can see that, well, x can't be, x can't be th 3, because if it was, both of these would be 0. Uh, but that even works if we go back to this one. If x was 3 here, this would also be 0. So you might think, well, I th you might think that there's two restrictions, but it's actually the same restriction. It just uh, looks a little different in the original question. So our restriction is x is not equal to 3. Okay, so that'll be it for this lesson. Uh, the next lesson is a continuation of adding and subtracting rational expressions. Um, and it has the same work that I've listed here. So don't do it twice. I think you would probably notice before you actually do it twice, but um, we'll continue on with some slightly more difficult examples involving factoring. Um, so uh, until then, uh, thanks for joining us today, and we'll see you in the next lesson.